Hi, welcome to Make It With Tim. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make two different jigs for your circular saw. One for rip cuts and one for cross cuts. Yeah. I'm going to be making myself a rip jig for my circular saw. Now, to do that, I've had to go and get myself some plywood from the local hardware store. I've got myself 9mm thick plywood. You can get some of the uh, bigger hardware stores to cut your wood for you. That is to cut the fence and to cut the width of the actual jig itself. Uh, but I'm going to show you today how to do it yourself at home when you buy just the plywood and you have a circular saw and you make your own jig for yourself. The tools you'll need are a circular saw, an adjustable set square, a drill or impact driver, the screw bit and the countersink for it, some small screws, glue, clamp, pencil and your safety gear as well as the plywood that you're going to use for the project. When you get it brand new you will have a nice straight true edge on your plywood. That straight edge is going to act as your fence so the first thing we need to do is to measure the fence that we're going to be using and then to cut that. The fence I'm going to be making is going to be four centimeters wide and when I was uh, considering what plywood to get thickness wise I also took into consideration the distance from the motor housing down to the plywood when this saw is at its lowest point so the maximum amount of blades out the bottom. Nine millimeters works for mine. You should check whatever it is you have to make sure that nine millimeters will also work for you. My fence is going to be four centimeters wide so I've set this up for four centimeters. I'm going to put it on my wood put the pencil on and then just run it all the way along. Before I cut I need to make sure that my blade depth isn't going to be too much greater than the wood depth that way I get the cleanest cut possible. Also when adjusting the blade depth if your hand's anywhere near the blade, make sure you take your battery out. This way there's no risk, any danger that the blade's going to start spinning and your fingers are going to be cut off. So I've set the depth, now it's a good time to put my battery on. When making this cut, it's a good idea to make it as straight as possible, but don't worry too much, as this isn't going to be the straight edge that your circular saw goes against, it's the other side that doesn't get used. I then mark the original edge of the plywood, which is the true straight edge that I'm going to use for the fence. I then found the distance from the blade to the edge of my circular saw that is going to run against the fence. This is important, because I need to put my fence a little bit further into the plywood than that distance. So for me, it needs to go a little bit further than nine centimeters, because at the end, I'm gonna make a cut with a circular saw, making sure that I now have a perfectly straight edge and a zero clearance on my blade. The second line I drew here is gonna be the total width of my sled. Again, it's good to cut along this line as straight as possible, but don't worry too much. We now have the basis of our jig cut. We've got the bottom of our jig here, and then we've got the rail that will sit on top. I then applied wood glue along the fence, making sure it's evenly spread. I then stuck it to the base, along the line that I had already marked out for it, making sure the true straight edge that I had marked was facing the correct direction. I then use the countersink to make holes for the screws to hold the fence in place while the glue dried properly. I then put the screws in and made sure that they were flush so they didn't catch on anything. The very tip of the screws that I used came out the other side of the plywood 
Now I could have used shorter screws, but I wanted the thickness of the screw through as much of the plywood as possible rather than the point so that I got maximum grip. To sort this problem, I just got my file out and filed down the ends of the screws so that they were nice and flush to the bottom of the wood. The jig is nearly done. I've got the rail on the base and now all that's left for me to do is to trim off the extra little bit here and I'll have a perfectly flush line with where my blade will cut. As you can see here, the jig now perfectly fits the circular saw that I have. The blade is nice and flush to the wood and I have zero clearance. You can use the jig like this, but there are a couple more improvements that we can do to it. So first of all, I like to put a thin layer of wax on the running surface here so that the circular saw slides much more smoothly. For this, you can use any kind of wax you have around that's going to create a smooth surface for your circular saw to glide along. Another thing that we can do to make this jig better is if we turn it over the jig, we can stick sanding pads on the back. This way, when we're using the jig, it's got a little bit more grip and it's less likely to slide around. Now, of course, clamping the jig down before you make your cut is always a good idea, but sometimes it's just not possible to clamp it down. So having this as a little bit more grip will make the whole job a lot easier. There you have it, a ripping sledge for your circular saw. We've got a nice straight fence, so we know that we're going to make nice straight cuts. We've got a zero clearance edge, and we've got grip on the back so that it doesn't slide around. Now, we can stop here, or we can take the end of this and turn it into a cross-cut sledge for our circular saw as well. To make the cross-cut sledge, I take my rip sledge, turn it over and make a nice mark across the back at 90 degrees. I'm now going to cut this and this will leave me with a nice short section to make my cross cut sledge with. For the cross cut sledge I need a section of the rip cut sledge and then an extra piece of wood. I'm going to put it on here, I line up the edge, countersink the hole, and then put the screw in. It's important that this screw sits below the surface of the wood, as the base of your circular saw is going to glide over the top of this and you don't want it catching on the screw. Once you've got the screw in the end here, you need to get this face and this face lined up so that there is a 90 degree angle here. Once you're happy with that, you can put a screw in. Now it's time to see whether the different sledges work. As you can see here, I'm just taking a slim cut off a piece of plywood and it leaves me with a beautiful straight edge. And the same thing for the cross cut sledge. It makes the cross cut at 90 degrees simple and easy to do. So there we have it. Two jigs. One for a rip cut and one for a cross cut with your circular saw. Obviously this is how I build the jigs. It'd be really interesting to know if you have any other alterations or improvements on them. If you do, please leave a comment in the uh, comment boxes below. So all that's left to say is please, if you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave me a comment. It'd be really good to hear from you. So take care, enjoy your woodworking and DIYing, and God bless.